priority position of being a financial professional. So I will confess that I'm not wearing a tie today, but that little picture just kind of reminded me of, of uh, getting back to some of the basics. That was a great series, by the way. Uh, th for those of you who haven't heard more about that series, we'll click up on that. All right, guys, so we're going to get underway um, with today's program. Um, today's program is the next installment in the Maximum Performance Webinar Series. For those of you who are new to our series, we started this back in October of last year as a weekly training series really focused on the um, sharing of information and ideas and creating a community that gets together on a regular basis to really refine our craft and perfect our skill. Um, obviously, Maximum Acceleration is a professional coaching company. That's what we've been doing since uh, the later part of 2004, full time. Um, but we decided to launch this series as a way of giving a lot of great information and a medium and resource that allows you to take things to a whole other level in your business. So today's program is actually the continuation of a series that was started a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Mr. David Kuyper is our speaker with today's program, really focusing in on the power of financial planner partnerships. Um, now, David and I have gotten to be good friends over the years through our work together with the Mortgage Success Source family of companies and on the faculty with Loan Toolbox and everything. Um, and and uh, you know, but his tenure and experience is, is, is pretty outstanding. In his career, um, David has been doing loans for over 23 years, starting in the mortgage business in 1990, um, has to date closed over 5,800 loans, 5,800 loans, over $1 billion in origination volume career to date. Uh, last year, his team and him closed a little over, four, uh, just shy of 400 loans last year. And a big part of his success um, has always been um, based on the relationships he develops with financial planners. So I've asked him to join and share with our audience today how to create the kind of synergy and uh, effectiveness and productivity that you create by uh, working in concert with those other financial professionals. So uh, with that in mind, David, I'm going to let you take the reins on this and, and run us through your program today, and then we will be leaving some time for Q&A towards the end of the call. Alrighty, and just to catch uh, people up to speed, we had intended this to be a one call and had some major tech challenges last time with syncing of the slides and the voice and no audio and sometimes audio. And so I think we've got that under control now and that will give us a little bit more time to carry on with the rest of the presentation. So um, if you joined us before, thank you. And hopefully you've also received the email that had some of the resources that were provided uh, with last time's call. And we'll, I'll uh, point out some additional resources um, that will be forthcoming as well. And I also wanted to give a shout out to uh, listener Dan Rogers, who was on last time's call and contacted me directly and it happens to be in Michigan where I am physically located and is coming to see me tomorrow to check things out. So I'll get to know another friend in the biz and hopefully add some value to his life and that's what we're going to be doing here today. Um, and are my slides advancing? I just want to triple check. Yep, we're seeing them moving right. along. So um, last time uh, we're going to look at four steps, and last time we got through before we had to cut off the uh, recording, and I actually talked through two of these bullet points, but only one of them was able to be recorded. We talked about identifying uh, prospective financial advisor partners uh, to involve um, in our practices. And so I'm just going to run through those quickly, and then you can listen to the previous call to catch up on some of the resources and tips and thoughts there. Um, but we talked about a, having a personal introduction from a client who it is that they're working with and how to uh, enhance that, uh, doing some professional networking, hanging out where financial advisors hang out, uh, teaching continuing ed uh, courses and how to get started on, on that, reviewing your client statements uh, when you're looking at AltDoc uh, and working on uh, transactions, uh, as well as cold calling and some of the steps and how to get started in cold calling if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, the second step that we're going to start with today is the approach and how to approach a financial advisor that you'd be interested in, in becoming a business partner with uh, and then procuring or uh, obtaining that relationship and then how to nurture that relationship in an ongoing manner. So as we start with the securing the appointment, uh, we've, we've uh, identified who it is that we want to work with, with some of the uh, tips and tools and strategies that we learned last time. But we're going to make an introductory call uh, to this advisor following up on some of the materials we may have sent them uh, previously and just ask you know, a simple script, something like, I'd love a few minutes of your time to introduce myself and show you how our advice can help you to grow your practice, help your clients increase their net worth, 
which of course will be music to their ears. Um, but just uh, differentiating yourself a little bit and giving them the reason uh, that you're contacting them. Um, and then you're going to want to ask for the appointment and uh, schedule something, get that on the calendar. Um, Typically, I like to meet in a neutral place the first time, so uh, a lunch or a coffee appointment uh, kind of thing. And beyond that, as we start to procure and nurture the relationship, we'll definitely want to be meeting, uh, visiting their office, seeing their space, their environment, the atmosphere uh, that they work in, some, meet some of their team members, as well as have them into your offices so that they can experience the same um, of what your, what your practice is all about. Um, I immediately then send a confirmation email, just letting them know um, that you're looking forward to the appointment, confirming the time, um, perhaps a few of the topics that you'd like to cover, maybe some um, introductory biographical material or something. Uh, often when you're talking with somebody, they may have mentioned something to you that was of interest, uh, whether it was you know, trending property values or sales statistics or a challenge that they might be having or something specifically related to the client maybe that introduced them to you or something like that, you might have a resource or a handout or an article or something that you could uh, forward um, as well just to uh, give them a little bit of an added value. And then I'm also going to send a handwritten note card uh, to them and uh, I've got a little sample script of, you know, just, hey, looking forward to meeting you uh, kind of thing. And uh, often we'll send along, again, a resource or a tool or a book, if I've read a book recently that um, is of specific interest to me that I think they might uh, find enjoyable as well. But as you get ready to then meet with the financial advisor, it's, it's important to understand some key terminology. So doctors have med speak, and we have banker speak, and uh, they have financial advisor speak, I guess. Uh, but understanding some of the key terminology so that as you uh, listen to some of the things that you're saying, you kind of know what they're talking about so that you can use some of the same words, uh, whether they're translated to mortgagees or um, just from your general experience of perhaps being a client of a financial advisor, just uh, being able to talk intelligently and not use the wrong words and make yourself look silly. Uh, but one of the things that they're really into is assets under management. That's kind of the, the benchmark that they uh, base their uh, success on uh, is how much money are they managing for people. There's a different ways that financial advisors get paid. We'll take a look at a couple of uh, ways that they do that. There's the fee-based advisor, um, which is basically charging a fee, uh, whether that's an hourly rate or a percentage, a percentage of the assets under management or something like that um, for the advice and the service that they're providing, or a sales charge. Um, so the um, sales charge would be more of the commission-oriented, the, the uh, broker um, or the uh, commission on a percentage of a sale like an insurance product or something like that, just understanding how it is that they uh, get paid. Um, asset allocation is going to be a term uh, that they use, um, basically looking at how are the, the, the funds that they are managing, how are they being invested, whether it's stocks or bonds or mutual funds or insurance products and the like. And then diversification would be within that class of stocks, let's say, what types of stocks are being invested in or what types of mutual funds, uh, growth or international and that kind of thing. And then down to selection is which specific stock is being invested in or which specific mutual fund or, or uh, bond or insurance product. And then they use some statistical measurements. Those will come up very infrequently, but just know that they have measure things like delta and alpha and beta and like other Greek stuff. And I guess Greek words probably aren't really cool in today's uh, economic environment, but uh, you might hear those from time to time. But understanding how they get paid, um, advisors get paid in different ways. Uh, one way that uh, some advisors get paid is just charging an hourly rate as a professional, like an attorney or a CPA, of just um, maybe not necessarily doing uh, a lot of the actual execution of trades and such, but just charging for their advice. Um, some do get paid on commissions. And some, most financial advisor practices will get paid in different manners based on different things that they're doing for their clients. But the traditional commission-based sales uh, would be on the, you know, the sale of an insurance product or uh, a uh, stock sale or something like that that's specific to that product. Uh, fee-based is where I like to focus my uh, energy and attention on the fee-based advisor. Uh, the fee-based advisor is typically paid a percentage of the assets under management. So there's not a conflict of interest of, ooh, I can quick make a, uh, make a quick buck uh, and earn a commission 
uh, by selling this person a product, but rather uh, growing with that client over time. And as they grow, if they're earning a percentage of the assets that they're managing, the larger that they can grow that asset, the larger they're growing their income. So their, their values are aligned. And I like to have partners, uh, other business partners that have or are looking out for the best interest of the client and not necessarily for their own uh, pocketbook. Um, so that's step two. Um, we've, uh, in step one, identified who it is that we want to work with. Step two, we want to make contact with them and schedule some time uh, to get together. And now let's look at uh, what's going to go on when you actually meet this person and greet them and care for some of the niceties um, of introducing yourself and just uh, kind of just letting them know, again, how you heard about them, why it was that you were attracted to wanting to make contact with them, you know, praise them, suck up a little bit, um, and then really make the interview about them. This is not a show up and throw up kind of, I'm awesome, send me all your clients, I like to do lots of loans, and I do a really good job. Um, what you're wanting to do is find out about their practice what it is that um, is important to them, what it is, what's important to their clients, and basically establish some credibility, set yourself uh, up as the expert, uh, as the authority, um, by virtue of calling on a financial advisor rather than chasing uh, real estate agents and builders, um, you're already going to differentiate yourself and they're going to wonder, what does this person have that I really uh, want to see? Um, so you'll kind of approach it from an interview. Um, not desperate, like, please send me some business, uh, but you're kind of interviewing them um, in a kind way, finding out, do you want to work with them? Okay, You want to communicate in such a way that they want to pursue you. So some good questions uh, to ask during the uh, interview would be things like, do your clients ever have a need for real estate financing? It's a great uh, opening line. Do your clients ever ask you for your advice when they're purchasing real estate? Do you analyze your client's debt and home equity when you do an annual review? Do you work primarily with business clients or individuals? Have you referred business to other lenders in the past? Just kind of getting a feel for what their experience has been when uh, working with other uh, with a mortgage professional as as a uh, complementary uh, suite of their services, and a lot of them don't. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about annual reviews, but one thing that uh, almost every advisor that I've ever worked with meets at least annually with their clients. But financial advisors tend to be very um, focused on the asset side of the balance sheet. They are managing assets, the the uh, the cash, the net worth of their clients, and very often they don't touch on or even think of uh, what's going on in the liability side of the balance sheet. What does the debt structure look like? How much debt is there? And how is it structured? They understand it, um, but being able to communicate that how debt is structured and how much debt is structured totally impacts how things are going on on the other side of the balance sheet. So how the mortgage transaction is structured from a uh, down payment perspective or from a term of loan perspective will impact cash flow, future uh, income tax uh, ramifications, um, as well as just asset depletion in some cases. So just helping the advisor to see why you're there, what you're going to do to help them as the asset uh, side of the balance sheet manager, how you as the liability side manager can play together in enhancing the client's overall net worth. One thing that I do like to do is share what's important to me about working. Uh, with other ancillary professionals. And I think we mentioned last time, too, this is kind of focused on financial advisors, but you can use these same uh, strategies with working with insurance professionals or with accountants or with estate planning attorneys um, as well. So this next screen is just some criteria that I share. This is what I expect of the people that I work with. And uh, this will be a handout that will be provided for you to uh, swipe and adapt as well. I want to work with people that you know demonstrate honesty and integrity. They do what's right. Uh, I want them to be in growth mode. So I'm probably not going to call on an 80-year-old person that works part-time, but I want to grow over time uh, with them and with their clients. They've got to be fun. They've got to be enjoyable to work with. We work way too hard to work with miserable people. So find fun people and enjoyable people, like-minded people. Um, I like to work with balanced people. And I'm not going to even pretend not to be a workaholic right now, but um, I uh, tend to like to work with people that don't uh, abuse me on Sunday afternoons with emergency phone calls and that kind of thing. Uh, 
typically they work when the market's open. So um, very defined uh, professional uh, kind of schedule uh, that they keep. Uh, I like them to be efficient. I like to uh, have um, uh, mutually agreed upon systems in, in place so that the uh, transition and uh, the involvement of the client is very smooth. Uh, I like them to be loyal. I think we all like that in our uh, referral partner relationships in terms of a, a um, fully sold out, committed, Kuiper's the only one, don't even think about going anywhere else kind of person. Um, and then again, like being like-minded, having similar values uh, with uh, whatever it may be in addition to honesty and integrity, but um, family values, um, social values, and the like. Um, so this is a handout that you can use uh, as well and customize to your expectations. Um, differentiating yourself from the competition uh, is always a good thing. Again, you've, you've demonstrated that you're a professional and um, given some credibility. Um, this might be a time where you're talking about uh, awards or recognition or um, something like that. Um, one of the things that I'm most proud of, uh, in addition to you know big numbers, units, and dollars lent over a career, uh, would be that a little better than 85% of that business is repeat clients. Um, so uh, having that kind of book of business, a largely referral-based business, says I must be doing something right and people like me. And that's going to be the kind of person that an advisor is going to uh, trust and respect uh, as well. So a couple of power words and phrases. So this is going to be just kind of using um, language. The What we say communicates a lot in addition to uh, what it is that we're saying, how we say it. Uh, I like to call myself a mortgage planner versus, you know, loan officer or originator or some of the other fancy terms uh, that come up. But just communicating subliminally uh, that there is a plan. There's thought, design, intent, focus going on, and we're not just winging it and uh, doing transactions. Um, we, we refer to the time that we spend with our clients as a mortgage planning session um, rather than the uh, appointment or consult or something like that. Again, just communicating that uh, intent. And I just had a funny thought that popped in my head that I forgot oh, when I was talking about mortgage planner. Um, I had a, uh, I placed a phone call several years ago and a young child answered the phone and I asked to speak with his mother and he yelled, I heard in the background, Mom, it's that loan dude. And so I thought loan dude was kind of a cool uh, job title or description, and I thought it would make a fun vanity license plate. Um, but here in Michigan, we can only fit seven letters on, and loan dud wasn't going to quite cut it, and I couldn't make it work anyway. Else. So whatever, get creative with, with uh, what it is that you call yourself and what you do. Uh, I refer to my business as a practice. I want to communicate professionalism similar to a doctor or an attorney uh, with their practice. Again, just differentiating myself, uh, setting myself up as that respected uh, peer. Um, I like to refer to clients as clients instead of borrowers or customers or homeowners or um, applicants or <laughs> anything like that. But the, the term client communicates a relationship, a long-term ongoing uh, relationship. You're working for them. It's not uh, simply a transaction that you're executing one time, love them and leave them, uh, but it's, you're entering into a transaction and growing with them uh, over the, the term of their uh, borrowing and homeowning and investing career. And I like to use the word represent, again, pulling in from the legal community. Um, when I send a thank you note or an introductory note, I'll very often say something like, we're looking forward to representing you for your financing. Or in an introductory note, I'm representing so-and-so for their financing and then getting on uh, with the concept. And when financial advisors talk about their assets under management, I like to talk about my mortgages under management. Again, it's not a love them and leave them, uh, move on to the next file strategy, but it's a continual watching over, is my client in the best financing situation that they could be? Um, obviously, in today's low interest rate environment, are they in the right, uh, you know, should they refinance and obtain a uh, lower cost of funds? Or how is it structured? Or what life changes have taken place? And we'll look a little bit more at that when we talk about doing the annual review uh, jointly with the advisor. Um, so that will be a handout along with an article uh, that I authored a couple of years ago uh, that will be provided that just talks about how we use uh, the words uh, and the power that words can carry when we use the right words. And if you can read those really little letters, you're better than I am. Um, and then we want to uh, ask, what's in it for them? 
they want to know, well, why would I want to work with you? And uh, a couple of different answers. Uh, number one, the ability to create outbound referrals. So we talked a little bit last time about how many people do not have a financial advisor relationship and how they really should. And uh, being able to identify unattached clients that you come in contact with probably every day and getting them introduced to a financial advisor to begin working. So it's going to introduce them, create outbound re referrals, introduce them to new clients, gain additional assets under management. Um, in working with the, their existing clients, they're just going to be more satisfied. Hey, my, my financial advisor is providing more. He's not just looking at the assets that I have, but he's also looking out for uh, me holistically and also taking a look at my debt and my home equity and how that's structured and how that impacts uh, my investments. Um, and that could also then help to retain and grow. Um, so very often, um, for example, a client's going to liquidate an asset to purchase a house, and that might not be the, the most uh, beneficial strategy for the client, especially in today's low interest rate, still tax deductible uh, mortgage uh, environment, borrowing environment. Um, so sometimes showing somebody how they can uh, achieve desirable financing without liquidating something will help retain the assets that the investor has or the uh, advisor has under management and then allow them to continue to grow. Um, the same with if that money is elsewhere and being moved uh, to the advisor. So it can be a very powerful and beneficial uh, strategy. Um, there was one year that I think I was able to refer close to $10 million uh, in investments to one of the advisors that I work with. Um, so I'm guessing that he probably really <laughs> valued that. Um, and I did a ton of uh, mortgage referrals um, back from him as well. So it, it uh, can be a very mutually beneficial relationship. Um, so let's move on now and talk about we've uh, identified, we've approached them, we've had that meeting. Now how do we uh, continue to stay in touch with uh, this financial advisor and continue to add value to the advisor and to their client? Um, Follow-up campaigns. Um, I tend to lean on automated uh, systems, whether that um, is something like uh, Mortgage Market Guide or Loan Toolbox, um, the Platinum Plus series, just continually adding. I like to mix in some mail pieces and some custom postcards, just continually staying in front of them um, as we find information, uncover information that may be of benefit to them and their clients, or on practice management tips or growth tips or time management skills or whatever it might be and just uh, continuing to um, get that information in front of them. So subscribe to uh, periodicals uh, that they uh, subscribe to, for example. Um, you know, the Journal of Financial Planning or Advisor Today or something like that. So you're just kind of getting an awareness of what's going on in their world legislatively, culturally, demographically, um, what challenges is their industry facing so that as you're out there and reading and finding out more about the business that they're in, you can, again, um, be adding the value to them as well as showing that you care and uh, that you're intelligent and that you have an awareness of what's going on. Um, watch the media um, as you're surfing online or getting subscriptions, finding information that may be valuable uh, to them and providing them copies or links or uh, whatever you like. And then introduce them to what it is that you do. Um, so this would be best done when they're coming in to visit your office, your practice, and meeting your team and seeing the environment that their clients are going to experience when they meet with you and just showing them what it is that you use. So um, it might be the Borrow Smart software uh, or some other planning software that you use. It might be having your mortgage market guide screen uh, bond quotes up on a, a screen where you can see the uh, live pricing and they kind of understand that you're aware of you know, real time what's going on in the markets um, and the like. So they Again, just showing that you're different, that you're more informed than the average uh, loan officer, and that, that you're sharing that with them and with their clients. Um, meeting with staff is key. Um, having the ability to transfer trust and relationship from you uh, to a, a lending assistant or a personal assistant or even a processor, uh, as well as theirs, because very often they're busy, they're in sales, like we're in sales. Um, we're getting paid when we're meeting with clients, and sometimes the detail uh, work um, isn't best served by us doing it. Um, so having the, the confidence that, that your staff and their staff have the ability uh, to care for a lot of the details. And then just continue learning 
um, and being involved in some of the things like the um, NAFA, the National Association of Insurance and Financial Advisors uh, that I uh, talked about last time, um, being involved with what it is that they do with their industry events, with their um, meetings and groups, uh, as well as reading uh, periodicals and um, searching online for information that may be uh, of benefit uh, there. Some of the things that you can do um, furthering the uh, advisor relationship would be to uh, teach some seminars, uh, clients. Uh, a lot of uh, investment advisors or financial planners will periodically host um, educational meetings for their clients, and they'll bring in a speaker from uh, an insurance company or a mutual fund company and talk about the economy or talk about trends and investing or something like that, and it can be a very good one to uh, do on different topics related to real estate and mortgage financing. So, for example, you know, becoming an investor and owning investment property uh, could be for first-time buyers, for the kids of some of the clients of the financial advisors or some of the younger clients who may not be homeowners yet. Uh, college planning, uh, credit repair, um, doctors have some of their own unique uh, financing needs, cash flow needs and the like. Um, some financial advisors specialize in working with medical practice. Um, equity management strategies, if and when uh, property ever starts appreciating again, small business lending uh, would be some topics that, that you could uh, jointly teach or you could be the guest speaker and talk with the uh, financial advisor's client. So it's a great way by having you as the speaker, you're automatically set up as the expert, the authority uh, that people will want to work with. So you're getting that endorsement. And then you're also getting to meet a lot of very well-qualified people who, if they have a financial advisor in their life, they probably have some uh, discretionary income and some net worth uh, already underway. Uh, another one would just to be continuing to generate leads for each other, uncovering opportunities. Um, and part of that happens during joint annual reviews. So very often the advisor's meeting, at least annually, with their clients, going over what's happened, what do we need to do, what needs to be realigned or re-strategized here, what changes have happened in your life. And I just ask the financial advisor that when they're doing that and they're very focused on the assets that are under management, to bring in the debt management uh, piece as well. So one of the forms that I use is the annual mortgage review uh, questionnaire. And it's just a very simple, short and sweet, you know, what's changed since we last talked? Are there any major upcoming changes uh, that you see in the near future? Um, how long do you think you're going to continue to live in this house? Um, those numbers, you'll be amazed at how often those uh, things change when somebody buys their dream house and then decides either they don't like it or they want to downsize or they want to do a major renovation or uh, something like that. Um, family growth, uh, retirement planning, a lot of those kind of uh, questions come in. And then just again, ranking like we did with the concierge form, the relationship that they have with their other providers like their estate planning attorney or their financial advisor or their uh, CPA and being able to then not only generate some referrals if there is a change going on, but everybody being on the same page, the client, the asset manager, and the debt advisor, all being on the same page and knowing what's going on. So that uh, will be a resource that you can have and uh, swipe it and adapt it to your own practice along with an article on uh, implementing the strategy uh, like the annual mortgage review. Um, database management is huge. Um, having records of who the advisor is um, so whatever your database is, knowing where that business is coming from, the contact information uh, that's going on there, the details of the loan so that uh, you and the advisor can be on the same page as to knowing what's going on uh, with the client at all times. Um, another part of database management is uh, two, two things. Uh, the first one we'll talk about is just you as the uh, mortgage professional being able to generate some outbound leads and uh, we'll get you copies of these two letters as well. Uh, but this would be one that I could send to a client who does not have a financial advisor and just giving them some statistics, a, a call to action, recommending a financial advisor uh, relationship and who that advisor that I would uh, refer them to. And once you have established several relationships and you don't really want to like play favorites necessarily, uh, but often uh, advisors will focus on high net worth individuals with minimum dollars to invest. Some advisors specialize in retirement and income or retirement income planning. Uh, some advisors specialize in college planning. Some advisors specialize in uh, working with young families and getting started on retirement planning. 
and so you can kind of get a feel for the demographic and the profile, the uh, net worth profile of your client, which advisor uh, they might most closely align with, and that could, you know, personality and, and likability could come into that as well. Uh, but this is just a sample letter that you could send out and just saying, hey, I highly recommend that you give Shane a, uh, a call and do a uh, financial fitness checkup. You're one of my important clients. He knows that. He's going to take good care of you. Uh, check it out. Reverse of that can also be true where the financial advisor could generate on their database, on their uh, letterhead rather, and send uh, to their clients uh, by email or uh, in the mail uh, an endorsement of you and just saying something like, in today's world, hey, interest rates are near record low levels. Um, you may want to think about refinancing. I'm not the expert in this area. Kuiper is. Give him a call. He'll understand that you're an important client of mine and take great care of you. And then, you know, David and I, uh, can talk about you and your situation and figure out if there's something that should be um, done or adjusted in your um, borrowing profile. So those, those two letters will be uh, resources that you can use and customize uh, into your own language and um, personality as well. And then just continuing to um, learn about what's going on in their business. So some success tips. Communication is huge. Um, when a financial advisor refers or introduces you to a client and you do a refinance for them, let the advisor know that you did it so that as they're updating their records, they'll know, you know what the cash flow and tax ramifications are of what you just did with their client. So always understanding that they are still the lead advisor. Um, you, in this case, even though we like to think we're the almighty important people that have all this data uh, that we can gather off the 1003, when there's an advisor involved, especially when the advisor's introduced the client to you, um, remember that they're the lead advisor uh, and that you're supporting them and their client. And then confidentiality, confidentiality is huge as well. Um, and depending on the client and the financial advisor and what's being discussed, um, I like to have it in writing and um, a couple of uh, handouts that we'll uh, give, one of which is just an author generic authorization to share information with each other. Hey, go ahead and talk to my advisor, whatever you want about me. Um, and one is the authorization to request information from someone else, like, hey, I don't feel like getting my tax returns. Go ahead and call my CPA, get in this authorization form, and they can just send it to you directly or something like that. So I tend to primarily focus on status issues rather than the content of the file as much as possible, but there's a lot of situations where we're getting into some some dollar discussions and some loan structure discussions, and it's just nice to have it in writing that the client is aware that you're checking them out or uh, requesting information or talking about them. So those will be a couple of resources that you can uh, customize to your own use as well. Um, understand the business uh, that they're working in, and right alongside that, don't make assumptions. Um, you will find very different approaches with financial advisors. So I work with some financial advisors who are huge equity management um, fans. Borrow as much as you can for as long as you can. I have other financial advisors that subscribe to the opposite theory. Make the biggest down payment and pay the sucker off as fast as you can with a short-term loan. So understanding where they're coming from, and you might challenge them or their clients if you see something better or an alternate approach, but being able to respect the relationship that the client already has with their financial advisor and the approach that they may have in play that may have been there for years and now you're just coming in, uh, it's not usually a good idea to you know, upset the apple cart. So asking questions is key and finding out what that uh, looks like. So some of the benefits of having those relationships, you've, you've looked around, you've done the work, who is it that you want to work with, you've engaged with those people, uh, you've begun to enter into a relationship with them, but why would you want to do that? Well, it's a high trust relationship. When a financial advisor says to the client, you need to call Dave, he's the best there is, it's a rollover referral. They are not going to shop me. Okay? A respected person in their life, a respected financial advisor person in their life is telling them that they need to work with me. Um, so it, it creates that very high trust a relationship. Touched on the fact that it's a very professional relationship um, in terms of you know, office hours and contact and scheduling and those kind of things uh, can be nice in our chaotic lives. Um, helps you escape the commodity trap. And what I mean by that is, again, not being shopped. Um, if, you're, if you're set up by another financial professional, whether that be a uh, financial advisor or the CPA or an estate planning attorney uh, or an insurance advisor or something, as you're the expert, um, 
they're, they're not going to treat you uh, like a vendor. Okay, they're going to treat you as another respected advisor. Um, they're going to be caring less about price and more about advice, uh, which is, is the uh, shift that we really need to uh, be working toward. And it's very personally rewarding. Um, not to mention, you're typically going to be working with uh, a much more qualified clientele. You're typically going to experience higher loan amounts with more qualified people. Um, these are going to be a little more uh, sophisticated, uh, experienced individuals. Uh, that you get to work with, so the loan process can be much smoother. Um, not to mention you might, like in the case of a couple of my financial advisors, in addition to becoming really valued uh, business partners, we've developed some really good friendships and we travel together and uh, our families hang out together and we do stuff together um, and it just can create that very deep uh, relationship. And finally, it helps eliminate the peaks and valleys because there's always financial planning going on even when interest rates start to rise or when the markets are falling, there's always something going on in people's financial lives. And if you're there, right time, right place, top of mind, you're going to be getting that business. So I'm guessing that that sounds pretty good. And Definitely. we did it. We got through a 90-minute presentation in one and a half classes. Awesome, awesome. Well, so yeah, a lot of those resources... Are... Oh, I was just going to mention a lot of those resources that I touched on, uh, I believe, Eric, you'll be mailing out, uh, emailing Correct. with the links and the, and the like, uh, so people can take those and download those and implement them immediately. Just take one at a time, otherwise you'll get overwhelmed because there's, you know, 10 or 12 resources there. Um, just yeah, take definitely. one at a time. If I can do it, you can do it. Well, definitely, guys. We're going to be going through some Q&A right here. Um, while we still have David on the line, there's a couple of key questions that got posted I wanted him to address. Um, and then we will be talking a little bit more about how to take action with some of these ideas towards the very end of the call that you want to make sure you stick around for. Um, one of the first questions that I'm going to throw at you, David, is um, you know, what about the situation where, and I think it's probably very akin to the captive agent situation, uh, you know, the, the in-house mortgage company at the real estate office, kind of the same approach here. The question is um, from uh, Mr. Williams is, uh, are, excuse me, Mr. or Mrs. Williams, um, one of our subscribers on here, is are you able to work successfully with financial planners slash advisors who have access to mortgage financing services through their company or firm. Um, I think I'm assuming you're probably talking about like the Edward Jones mortgage thing. Well, um, Edward Jones is out. How do you address that? <laughs> well, well, yeah, that's so the good news. Is Edward Jones is out for everybody on. Correct for everybody on the uh, uh, on the audience here on the recording. Edward Jones Mortgage was disbanded officially uh, as of mid March. In fact, one of our coaches was the the coach who worked a lot with the Edward Jones Mortgage sales teams that's now all been uh, disbanded. So a lot of Edward Jones financial planners are out there looking for a mortgage advisor to partner with, just so you know. Um, it's a good target for you. <laughs> yeah, um, but sure. David, how, would, how but, have you addressed that situation in the past? Well, um, typically when you're talking big company uh, like a Jones, um, everything's centralized. It's going to be much more of a desk jockey kind of person than an advisor, more of a transaction fulfiller. And yes, the the advisor might have gotten paid some spiff for sending the referral in and doing some of the work on the deal, um, but it's really not a hands-on advisor-related approach. So um, when, when, when a, a uh, probably, you know, a call center-oriented person that's not experienced and that doesn't have the technical knowledge of how to structure loans or make recommendations is just pushing paper around. Um, it, it can be a frustrating experience. So I've I've had, and I do work with a couple of Edward Jones advisors actually, um, that are just like it's not worth the headache or the hassle for me uh, to deal with my own company. Um, I, this way, I know I've got somebody local, where everything's happening on site. In, in my case, uh, you know, processing, underwriting, closings, all happening right here in my office. They know there's very tight controls and quality systems and turn, uh, great turn time. Uh, and the like. And quite frankly, um, when when somebody has an affiliate relationship like that, whether it's a builder, ABA, or an in-house real estate agent, or something like that, they're doing it to make money, and they're usually priced higher. So even though we don't like to focus on price, um, in addition to the client experience being less than desirable, very often it's a more expensive proposition. 
Yeah, uh, there, you know, there is one extreme alternative to that, which is, is kind of take our buddy um, at Connor Key's approach, which is actually get licensed so that you can actually get them involved and share revenue. But that's uh, not ideally the place we want to go in all of those. But I like the idea of the alignment, the, 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 you know, the fact that they're going to be referring their clients to somebody as equally skilled as they are um, and how they manage sort of long-term uh, growth. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, another quick question um, that came across here is biggest issue that I have with financial planners or advisors is they don't want to take on small clients. Is there a specific company that you'd recommend uh, that we could target or work with uh, that would accept newer investors or clients without large sums, sums of money? Mm -hmm. Yep, and that, so that's going to be key for introducing your client that's young, you know, in their 20s or 30s, maybe just starting a family. Um, wanting some IRAs and start some college money, and they might only have a few thousand bucks or uh, you know a few hundred a month that they can um, allocate, and that's not really all that attractive to a financial advisor. Kind of like it's not really all that attractive for me to do a thirty-five thousand dollar loan. Um, sometimes, depending on the 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 personality of the advisor, um, like in mortgage world, my personality would be. No, I don't want to do that. That's a money loser. I don't want to do a thirty-five thousand dollar loan. But someday that client's going to buy something bigger. If I take good care of this young kid, the parents are going to appreciate and respect that, and they might become a client someday. And looking at it more from an annuitized perspective of a uh, big picture of what's what's this relationship with a client worth over the next twenty years instead of what's this transaction worth. So being client centric uh, rather than paycheck focused um, can be key. Um, but w the advisor that I work most closely with it, uh, for the longest time and for the most high trust and the most you know, cross-referrals, uh, so to speak, um, actually added somebody to his team because he didn't want to deal with that. So he just he added a junior planner, so to speak, uh, that just works with young families. And this person is a young family man, uh, for example, and then um, has hired another person who focuses just on um, the middle market of you know the 30 to 50 year old, and then he's completely focused on the high net worth, um, pre just getting ready to retire and the uh, income during retirement planning. So I don't have an answer of this company is really good um, or, or something like that, um, but that that will take some um, exploration. Um, maybe even just um, last time we talked about local.google.com for typing in financial advisor and it'll spit out every financial advisor and the um, zip code, for example, that you're looking for, uh, and just maybe doing some web searches and going to their websites, and sometimes they'll post things like that uh, as to what their uh, desired client is. But that's a great question to ask as you're interviewing is, who is your ideal client? And maybe being able to flip that right around and describe to them what your ideal client is. Absolutely. It, you know, guys, these are all uh, ways of creating great synergy. And I'll add one comment to that, uh, David, is is that, you know, they do exist out there. And just like in any industry, there's, you know, there's a whole lot of mediocre performers, but there's a few exceptional producers. You know, it's the 80-20 rule. Um, in a lot of cases, it's even worse than that. It's a 95-5 rule. You know, 5% of the population does 95% of the work and takes the right approach and the right focus. They do exist. Um, you know, one of my uh, favorite financial advisors that I that referred a ton of business back and forth with, um, you know, was one of the first guys who kind of took that more annuitized approach. Is you know, he's as a financial advisor, and this was a guy who was a pretty successful financial advisor. I think he was approaching 100 million dollars under management at the time. Uh, was the first to tell me that you know, guys, you know, the fact of the matter is that the twenty-somethings couple that I get started on a twenty-five or thirty-dollar a month installment investment in the mutual fund becomes. The, the the six figure or seven figure net worth guy 20 30 years down the road and that's what I'm building for is the long term practice and so yeah I'll spend five minutes or I'll bring on a junior or my assistant can work with that younger couple just to get that structured you know consistent habit of savings going um, so um, right, if, so you, if you blow questions. off yeah if you're blowing off somebody when they need it, the help the most they're certainly not going to come back to you when it's discretionary. Yeah, and that's you know obviously it's an alignment of purpose. Um, you know the, the the handful, the few, and and I always use the phrase when we're talking about um, you know business development partner generation as you know you're going to kiss a lot of frogs to find the prince. Um, you don't have to kiss thousands, but you know you're going to talk to probably 15 or 20 guys before you find the one or two who are the right kind of guy 
to be working, or right kind of gal, I shouldn't be sexist here, uh, the right kind of advisor to be working with your clients that you've taken the time, energy, and effort to develop an effective plan for. Um, so all of these are issues that, that get developed and discussed as you meet with and interview these planners, as David has suggested. Okay, well, just in the interest of time, there's there's a couple of more things that we might have time at the very end to get through, but there's a couple of quick announcements that I just want to get in front of you because there's some great opportunities to get some great additional learning coming up um, that I want to give you all the opportunity to participate in. Um, and then we'll come back around on a couple of the additional questions if we have time. Um, first things first, uh, for those of you who, uh, I'm sure there's plenty of you on the call thinking about what is this whole coaching thing all about, uh, how does it help me grow, what is, what is coaching really, uh, the best way we've found to answer that question over the years is really to just to, to, to let you experience it. Uh, so what we do is we offer what's called a strategy session, uh, which is a one-on-one -on -one consultation with a coaching experience with one of our maximum acceleration coaches. We'll walk you through all the way through the, the stages of implementation and a, a specific action plan that you and uh, your team potentially, if you need it, uh, can execute to get from where you are to where you want to go faster. Through that experience, you'll be able to take advantage of uh, a lot of the tools and resources that we've developed over the years, like the tools that David mentioned to you. So if you're interested in receiving one of these strategy sessions, if you're serious about taking your business to the next level and would like the the guidance, the support, the accountability, and the additional leverage of, of, of a, body, a huge body of knowledge about how to do this the right way um, and how to get from whatever stage of, uh, you're at to wherever you want to be faster. Uh, certainly, there's two ways you can get access to that. One is if you want to go ahead and post it into the Q&A uh, right now that you'd like a strategy session with, uh, go ahead and post that in. Uh, two quick things. One, please go ahead and post the best phone number or email address to, port, uh, to reach you so we can coordinate scheduling. Uh, we only have a handful of these sessions available every week. Um, they are donated with volunteer time. I'm part of our coaching team. Uh, all of our co coaches are pretty close to maximum capacity right now, so we get filled on a first-come, first-served basis. So please you know, make it as easy for us to be able to get a hold of you to be able to coordinate and schedule that strategy session appointment for you. Uh, the other way you can get it is you can go to our website directly, mxlcoach.com slash strategy, and put in your information there so that our team can contact you. Uh, again, phone number and email address uh, is, is easy to start. The team will call you here in the next couple of minutes to try and get that coordinated. Um, additional opportunities for those of you who aren't quite ready to take to the next level um, and aren't serious about investing in your future uh, yet, uh, but maybe want to get some additional information and guidance to implement kind of the do-it-yourself model, Next week's webinar is by popular demand, um, social media expert Mark Madsen is going to be coming back to talk about social media 2.0, maximum results, minimum time. Um, he and I were having a conversation off the heels of the webinar last week, uh, and we're talking about the idea, you know, the, the biggest challenge, the, the biggest concern that we see our clients have with social media is how do you do social media without it running your life, um, without running your life. And, and he said, you know, he, he said something to me yesterday when we talked is, you know, guys, I don't do social media. I leverage social media to drive traffic to my blog and websites, which produces leads. I don't do social media. So he's going to be working with us next week to find out a lot more about how to really minimize the amount of time you spend on social media marketing and creating massive leverage from the online audience out there. Uh, if you're interested, go to the mxlcoach.com slash webinars page, which, by the way, that may be a page you want to bookmark and come back to frequently uh, because uh, we'll be able to get you access to that information. Um, all right. Uh, a couple of live events that are going to be coming up uh, in the first part of June. There are two events. Um, we are going to be running what we call our Maximum Growth Program. Uh, Maximum Growth Sum Summit is a four-part series that myself, Greg Frost, and Renee Rodriguez, and the rest of our coaching team walk you through in a live mastermind format where we actually dig in and look at what are your goals, what are your initiatives, and what do you want to accomplish in the next 12 months in your business. Uh, there are two opportunities coming up for being able to access that. It's about a five-hour program um, where we really go deep on where your greatest opportunities for growth are, what you're going to accomplish. And, and how to put an action plan in place for the next six months to be able to get you that the kind of results that you really want to see. Um, the first opportunity to access the Growth Summit process is at Stephen Marshall's Mortgage Executive Magazine Mastermind 2013 Summit in Las Vegas. 
Mastermind will run Wednesday and Thursday, the 5th and 6th of June. Our summit will be Friday the 7th at the same location, Palms Hotel. Uh, if you need tickets to the Mastermind, um, go ahead and jump on the mastermind.com, uh, uh, Mastermind 2013 website, and type in the access or the coupon code acceleration, and it will give you actually it's $150 off current ticket price, which actually reduces it all the way down to $449 to be able to attend both our summit and the Stephen Marshall Mastermind program. Uh, you can find out more information about that event at mxocoach.com slash events under the live events tab. Uh, the second opportunity to access the Maximum Growth Summit is at the Ultimate Mortgage Expo, which will be held in New Jersey, uh, in Atlantic City, uh, the 9th through the 11th. The actual business development programming kicks in um, Monday morning the 10th. Uh, and runs through about Tuesday afternoon, and there's the, the four parts of the Maximum Growth Series are going to be built into that conference. Uh, if you're interested in attending, you can attend for free. Uh, if you are a licensed originator, you can be able to get a free ticket to the event um, based on our cooperation with the sponsors and promoters for the Ultimate Mortgage Expo by using promo code NADISC. Um, MADISC is program code which will zero out the registration price and you get in for 100% for free for the Ultimate Mortgage Expo for that three-day conference. Uh, find out more information about the agenda of the program and how to access that information by going to the ultimatemortgageexpo.com website. Okay, so the last thing I told you you needed to hang out for, um, based on the ideas and concepts that David has shared with you today, based on the information that's available to you and what you've now absorbed, you invested your time in this program to do something with it. Ideas without action are useless. I don't care how wonderful or brilliant an idea is, if you don't do anything with it, will it change your business? And the answer is obviously no. So the final piece before you do anything else, before you pick up your next voicemail message, before you pick up the phone and dial somebody, before you look at your next email in your inbox, take three minutes and finish this exercise. Decide, one, what was the most valuable thing you heard about in this program? What's the one key idea or concept you want to implement immediately? Two, what action do you need to take to make that idea a part of what you do in your daily business? What is the specific next step or couple of steps that you need to take to start using that idea? Third is set a specific target for completion. By when, ideally, would you like to have that up and running in your business? What's your target date for completion? And then the secret sauce here, the magic ingredient uh, that makes it all work is accountability. Who you're going to ask to hold you accountable. Now, whether it's a colleague, uh, uh, you know, kind of a running buddy or, or a competitor, you know, friendly competition in the same office as you, whether it's a boss, whether it's a mentor, whether it's a, a best friend or a spouse, find somebody that you trust and respect enough that you'll feel guilty if you don't follow through on the promises you make. Share with them what you're doing and ask them to follow up with you in an appropriate timeline. Ask them to hold you accountable. The reason for this and the reason that this is the one key to implementation that goes far and above beyond anything else that I could teach you or share with you um, is recognizing that it's so easy to break promises to ourselves, it's so hard to break promises we make to those we care about, respect, and trust. I mean, think about the running buddy concept. Uh, I mean, you decided you wanted to lose some weight and you're going to start a jogging plan in the beginning of the year. Uh, New Year's resolution type thing, right? Uh, you go out and you do it on your own. Um, you start jogging Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It's the sixth of the year. It's cold. It's wet. It's nasty outside. You're sore and tired, and you hit the snooze button, roll back over, and go back to sleep instead of jogging that day. Probability is you never go out again. Let's take a different scenario on that. Let's say you decide you're going to jog, start a jogging program to start losing some weight. You tell a buddy about it at the, at the, uh, at the New Year's Eve party. He says, you know what, let's do it together. So you and your buddy agree that you're going to run together every other morning or whatever. And so day five, day six, day seven comes along. It's cold, it's wet, it's nasty outside. You're tired, you're sore, 
you don't want to do it, but you know your buddy's going to be on your doorstep at 5.30 in the morning to take you jogging, so you get up and do it anyway. That key to accountability, that accountability is the key to follow through and implementation for a great majority of the clients that we work with in our coaching experience. So if you'd like that level of accountability, if you'd like that level of support and you don't have an accountability partner anywhere else in your life, you're more than welcome to look at us as a possible resource for that. Again, if you're interested in more information, the best way to find out what coaching's true value to you could be is to experience it by signing up for one of our strategy sessions. It's no cost, no obligation, um, opportunity to get a real coaching environment from a real coach and walk away from the investment of an hour, uh, 30 minutes to an hour of your time with a great action plan on a specific challenge or issue you're fighting. Again, if you'd like access to that information, go ahead and post it in the Q&A here right in the webinar platform. That you'd like one of those Q&A sessions or one of those strategy sessions along with the best phone number and email address where we can reach you to go ahead and coordinate scheduling with one of our coaching team. Um, otherwise, you can also go to the mxlcoach.com slash strategy uh, website um, and register through there to give us the information we need to coordinate the scheduling. Um, otherwise, guys, if there's anything else my team or I can do for you, if there's any questions that were triggered as we were going through the q and I know we ran out of time to get today's program in the interest of getting you all out of here on time. Um, we didn't have time to address all the questions, but if there are any additional questions that you would like addressed related to the topic of today's program, feel free to go ahead and post them in the Q&A. We are going to leave the platform open for a few more minutes here where you can get those questions posted. And myself or David or one of our other coaches will make sure that we get that response back to you um, as soon as, as reasonably possible. Um, so go ahead and feel free to go ahead and post those notes in the Q&A right now. Um, with that, guys, I uh, want to thank you for joining us and investing the time in yourselves. You guys are the one percenters who, who take the time to work on perfecting your craft. And I want to applaud and congratulate you for investing this kind of time and energy into uh, doing what you do better so you can achieve better results in less time. Um, with that, David, is there anything that you would like to share as a final thought with our audience? Uh, go get them. Uh, it, it works. It's a powerful strategy, and you will enjoy it. And if you do have, yeah, like Eric said, uh, any uh, further questions or whatever, just uh, reach out in the message boards or, or uh, contact me directly. Awesome, awesome. Well, David, thank you again for a wonderful program. Thank you for doing an awesome job with getting some great information out to these guys. Um, I know from personal experience that, that uh, financial planners, financial advisors, and insurance agents were a huge part of my origination practice. Um, probably about 40% of my volume came in the way of, of collaborative marketing and, and, and referrals from uh, financial planner partners uh, as well, which is one of the reasons that it's, by the way, it also helps really balance softness in the real estate markets as well, especially during times of the year where the purchase money market is soft, uh, like the winter months up here in the north. Um, anyway, but uh, anyway, guys, I really appreciate your time and energy and investment. David, thank you one, again for a wonderful program. Uh, I'm really glad you were able to join us today. Um, otherwise, guys, uh, you're basically dismissed at this point. You're free to go. We're going to leave the platform open for just a few more minutes uh, to be able to